Well, hello, and welcome to the broadcast of Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And as you may know, this is a traveling TV program, and I am at Bradley Assembly of God in Bradley, Arkansas, with Pastor Hunt and Patsy Hunt. Oh, wonderful couple. Matter of fact, the reason I'm here is because they've given me the privilege to be able to come for the second time now, their second annual camp meeting. And I'm preaching tonight, tomorrow, Friday, and the next two Sundays. Of course, that's too late for you all to come and watch us, but I just want to let you know why we're here and that they're also my good friends. Now, I interviewed you folks uh, for my other program, and, uh, and uh, you may not have uh, a... Uh, a long history of addictions, Pastor, but it could have been because you started out as a young man uh, with drinking. Well, I was not always a Christian, uh, right? Candy, and not uh, didn't know the Lord, and uh, that's the way I was raised. My dad right. probably had me and Boris when I had diapers on, and wow. so, and then we made it. And uh, but I met uh, Patsy. When I was 17, Aww. she led me to Christ, Aww. and it's, it's been a beautiful, um, we were later married, been married wow. for 47 years, and wow. uh, in the ministry a long time, God's really been good to us. That's yeah. wonderful, and you know, you have a, 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 a testimony of abstinence. Because y'all went ahead and got married. Uh, Amen. Pure. 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 Yes. Isn't that? Now that is amazing. Yes. That is a testimony. Amen. And folks, you know, this is a, the name of my program is Addiction Free. And I only do interview people, though, that have been set free from addictions. Uh, but I want you to know everybody has a testimony. Yes. And this testimony shows the power also of God. Yes. Not only the power to deliver from any kind of bondage of addictions, but the power to be able to keep you and sustain yes. you. Yes. And, 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 and through the years, because now you've got many years of uh, living for the Lord and being used by the Lord. Yes. Uh, Pastor, you have a heart too for those in addiction. So uh, tell us about your recovery. Well, it's just our desire to see people changed and transformed by the power of God. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we we have Christy uh, Francis, who you have interviewed, and will be here in just a few minutes. But she's our associate outreach and youth minister. All right. We do recovery classes on Tuesday at seven o'clock in yes. the evening. Yes. And uh, God's really been blessing that. Uh, we're just uh, continually believing God uh, for a great outpouring of His Spirit and for lives to be changed and transformed yes. by the power of God. We're using your your material. I know, they're using my we're curriculum. Just, uh, we're just real uh, thankful for that. It's very Thank good. Thank you for using and, it. And uh, uh, I know I've told you that before, but it's very good. Oh, thank you. Yes, and yes. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we're just believing God. Uh, only He can change lives. That's right. And we're allowing Him to do that, just allowing Him uh, to flow through us. Yes, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to interview you here now. And uh, I know you're so proud of Christy Francis. Amen. Uh, she's been such a blessing to your church. Yes, yes. Uh, Patsy, could you uh, want to talk to us a little bit about Christy, how, how she's helped you and everything in your church? Well, she's also been such a blessing. She preaches on Tuesday, Wednesday night. Wonderful. Also, yeah. Oh. Uh, she loves the Lord with all of her heart. Oh. If you're all, ever on Facebook, put in Christy Francis. <laughs> you'll hear the word. I mean, you'll see the word because she puts yeah. it there. Yes. And she loves God. And yes. I'm glad to be her pastor's wife. And she loves you guys. Thank you. She has our uh, church Facebook page, and she keeps up with all of that for us. And that's wonderful. Uh, we're, we're proud of her. She's doing a good job. God's and she really has an amazing uh, testimony through her that's life. True. Yes. yes. All right. Well, Christy, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. This is your return uh, trip. Yep. Because uh, I had another uh, program called Recovery Today: Any Habit, and you were my guest on there. Matter of fact, you're one of my uh, first guest uh, that I ever um, uh, filmed. And so Christy has an amazing testimony of God's deliverance and forgiveness and power. And uh, I wanted her to just share with you. Now, Christy, uh, 
uh, I want you to take me back to uh, your young, a little bit your younger years, and tell me how you end, what your childhood was like and growing up, and then how you end up in addictions. Well, um, I guess I had a pretty normal childhood. Yeah, you know, mom and dad had us in church, yeah, you know, most of the time, like when they could make us go. Um, it got to a point though where they were having to force us more than we were wanting to go. But, um, you know, by the time we were teenagers, it seemed like drinking was the cool thing to do and smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes. And, and I wanted, I don't know, I wanted to be one of the cool kids. So I hung out with the bad crowd. Isn't that the way it is though? Mm -hmm. We want to be liked and we end up doing stupid things. Things just, that we wouldn't normally do. That's and, right. Just to get to, acceptance. Yes, peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I still have the same devil that's messed with everybody from eons ago to even yeah, now. He's had a lot of practice. Oh, um, yes. We fall for it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we want to be mean, liked. He still works on me. And it's sometimes it's a lot easier to fight him than others. But, um, yeah, in high school, I started drinking and started smoking and hanging out with mostly guys. You know, most of my friends were guys. And most of the girls didn't like me because of that. But it seemed like when the other kids grew up and kind of put their behaviors behind them, mine just got worse. Okay. Um, I moved to South Louisiana. I got married. And, you know, was pretty happy there for a while. But my ex-husband, and I, I didn't know anything about this until after we were already divorced, but he told my mom that he used to have to hold me down in the floor to keep me from driving. And mm -hmm. that was, when I'd get drunk, I'd want to drive. And I oh, felt yeah. like I was invincible. Oh, yeah. yeah and I, I was knew the same way. I knew thought, oh, all. I'm fine. I can drive. The more I oh, drank, boy. the more I knew mm. about everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I was mm -hmm. I was pretty obnoxious. I was real hard to live with. And, yeah, I, I embarrassed my family. Mm. Was pretty close to just driving them completely away, mm. you know. I praise God that I did not burn those bridges completely, that... They've been able to forgive me. Yes, you know, I, met your, got I met your mother and father. And nice people. Yeah, you know, my my little brother said he was done. This last time I got drunk, if I didn't get help, he was done. He was through. He couldn't handle it anymore. And praise God, he and I are closer now than we've ever oh, been. Oh, that's wonderful restoration, mm -hmm. folks. That's what God can do in your life too, because no matter what you've done, the you stay faithful to the Lord and through time. Sometimes it takes a while for everybody to see that, mm -hmm. hey, we're for real. This is not just a, a fluke, you know, right. that uh, we're, we're really following the Lord. And I feel like there's probably still some people in town that are waiting for me to fall or waiting for me to fail or wondering just how long it's really going to last. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's okay. I get made fun of a pretty good bit. Um, I get called... Names like Jesus Freak and Bible Thumper. And, That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's so much better than the names I used to get called. Yeah, really. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. But you know, I've, I've had people unfriend me on Facebook because I preach too much Jesus. and. Oh, well. I didn't know there was such a thing. And the more Jesus I get, the more Jesus I want. I know. He's wonderful. Yes, he is. Oh. All because of him, I have been clean and sober now 983 days. Wow, 900. That's, that's okay, how many a, years is that? Uh, is that two? It's almost two and a half years. Two and um, a half years. Wow. That's, that's you know, I'm completely over a 20 plus year addiction. Yeah. Because of God. Isn't that wonderful? And folks, that's what the Lord does and can do. Absolutely. What lies. He did for me, He'll do for you. That's right. And you praying, mothers, don't and uh, uh, praying all any of you praying for your loved ones. Yeah, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't ever give up. It may take longer than you think it should, but God's timing's always perfect. I know. We're examples of that. Oh, yeah. No, who would have thought that we would have been saved he can, with I, our lifestyles? There's nothing too bad that you can do that God won't forgive you. I know. Isn't that wonderful? He's so good He's to amazing. us. He's amazing. That's what he, he died is. on the cross for. Yep. He's, I mean, he just he amazes me. But you know, back in my addiction, I didn't care about other people. Mm -hmm. um, I was very self-centered. I was downright cruel. Um, I talked about people. I put people down. 
gossiped, you know, cussed like a sailor. Mm. Oh, I, I used to too. I had the foulest mouth, mm. and yeah. you know, the raunchier the music, the better I liked it. The mm -hmm. nastier the books, the better mm -hmm. I liked oh, it. Oh yeah, me too. Anything occult, yeah. witchcraft, demons, I was in that just as deep as I could get in it. And you know, when God changed me, yes. He changed everything. I know. Even I don't thoughts. like that kind of stuff. Anymore. I know. Isn't that wonderful? My I mean, it's amazing. Were what scared me the most? I was like, you know, Lord, how am I going to change the way I think? Yes. I didn't have to change it no. because He did. He did. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes in. He not only gives us the power to not do the things we used to do, our old behaviors, but He even changes our thinking. He does, and, and it then makes our desires more like His yes, desires for us. We start seeing things the way He sees mm -hmm. things, and we don't want the evil anymore. Oh no! And here it's... before we were all about evil, weren't we? Oh yeah. And but now it's like, wow! Ooh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to be around that and I mean I see behaviors wow. in other people now and you know, looking at them now through kingdom eyes mm -hmm. it's so much different than looking at them through fleshly eyes oh yeah um it's you know, some of the behaviors that disturb me the most now are so minor in comparison to some of my old behaviors I mean I was I was horrible <laughs> Yeah, and that's putting mean. it nicely. Yeah. Um, I was just, and I thought I was okay. You know, I think I played church, and I played Christian for a long time. I worked in bars for three or four years. Um, and, you know, I, my drug of choice was whatever was available. Okay. Um, alcohol was prevalent. It was always there. And I was drinking at work when I wasn't supposed to, smoking marijuana out the back door at work. Um if anybody had any pills or whatever else, you know, we were all going to do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, I let the meth get real bad there for several years. And I used to say I stopped that on my own. But now I know better. Yeah. I know that God stopped that for me. Yes. And um, you know, there's people in AA and NA that have, are abstinent and don't even believe in God. But I'm a firm believer that God gave, took that desire from them. They just don't mm -hmm. recognize it and give Him credit. We, we give Him credit. We I know we didn't change ourselves. Yes. Um, I tried so many times and failed so many times. And Jesus, putting Him first and surrendering completely to Him is the only thing I've done different this time. Yes. Putting Him first and it's keeping Him keyword, first. Completely. That's it. Complete completely. surrender is what it takes. Exactly. You can't keep a little bit for you. And I nope. used to think, well, if I give this up, I can still keep this. Or if I stop doing this, I can still do this every once in a while. Yeah. But yep. you know, for me, there is no every once in a while. No. Um, or otherwise, you're going to be no right back at drink. it. If I have yeah. one drink, I'm going to have 100. Oh, yeah. Um, there's no middle ground. That's right. Or median for me when it comes to drinking and drugs. and. Well, the Bible says there's a narrow road and the wide road. And it says few ever find the, the narrow, narrow road because everybody thinks that what they're doing is okay mm -hmm. because everybody else is doing it. There's even people, many, many people that come to church every week that are caught up in some kind of mess that they mm -hmm. shouldn't be dealing with. They still go out during the week and they live just exactly how they want to. They do what they want to. I know. They're just being deceived because they bottom are. line... Uh, we're not making heaven mm -mm. if we try to play a middle road, if we try and to just go to church and and uh, not live the life. Even at my very worst, I always said I love the Lord, and I always said that the Lord knew my heart. Yeah, I know. That's and a big that's one everybody truth. says. Yeah, that but, is, uh, that's the truth. Yeah, but <laughs> my heart then yeah. was nowhere near where it needed to be. Yes. But he knows how my heart is now today, too. Yes. And he knows he's got my heart. You see, that's an excuse that a lot of people say. Well, he knows my heart. And he knows that I, yeah, rationalize, justify, and minimize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it. I've done that myself. Matter of fact, people even look in the Bible and they go, well, Jesus made wine. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, when I got saved, I started studying that. He never made alcoholic, fermented, rotten wine. It was the fresh, the fruit, fresh fruit of the vine. The newest fruit Grape of juice. the vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He saved the best for the last because that is the best. Now, our old way of thinking would have been the fermented yep. when back when we weren't saved. But as a Christian, that would be the worst. You would want the good, the good wine. You would only want the grape juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I was about I'm to sorry. say. But it, 
it, God has just he's brought me so far. Mm -hmm. um, I've joined a committee for Wild Goose Outreach Ministries, and they're really taking street ministry out there and reaching people where the people are and as the people are. Um, okay. I'm hoping to take over the ladies' jail chaplaincy for them Ooh. pretty soon. I'm real excited about Ooh. that. Real excited about that. Um, Wonderful. And the thing is, you know, most of these ladies that I go speak to in jail, I've probably done drugs with them or drank with them at some point in time. Yes. And, you know, if I can change, if God can change me, anybody I can know. change. It's just getting out of his way and letting him do his good work. That's right. Hey, folks, we're just going to take a little break here, and I want you to uh, watch a little clip I made of uh, uh, the books that I wrote because, matter of fact, uh, she is the leader of um, her and Pastor Hunt here mm -hmm. uh, are part of the re uh, hold a recovery class right. here called Recovery Today, Any Habit, and that's the name of one of my books. Great so we're going to take a little break, and we're going to show you a little uh, preview of what these books are, and then we're going to come back and visit with her. glad that, that you came and, and let me uh, interview you again. What I'd like you to do, I'd like you, though, to just look into the camera and encourage the folks for at least a couple of minutes. Okay. Encourage them. I'm going to lead them in a prayer to the Lord, and, and, uh, but I would like you to just say, hey, it's, it's wonderful living for the Lord. So go it ahead. Is. Um, it is absolutely fantastic living for the Lord. Back when I was in my addiction and drinking and drugging, I thought if I was a Christian, I couldn't have any fun. You know, I just, I thought my life was going to be boring. And it is so far from that. It, it's more exciting now than it ever was when I was drinking and doing drugs. <clears throat> For the first time in my life, I'm happy. I'm content. I've got joy that I never even knew existed. And it's all because of Jesus. Um, when you surrender it all to Him, He changes you right then. And it's from the way you think to the way you talk to the way you walk. The TV shows you like, the books you like to read, the music you listen to even. I don't, when I was at Teen Challenge, I used to think I can't wait till I get home and I can listen to country or rock and roll music. And now I, I don't even want to listen to that. I listen to Christian music all the time. Um, God blesses me more each and every day. And he amazes me more each and every day. Just, it doesn't matter what kind of struggle you're dealing with. If you surrender it all to God and if you put Him first, I promise you everything else will fall into place. Well, friends, I hope this program is encouraging you. You know, there's nothing like the power of God in your life. But one thing is really important is that you realize this is a relationship with Jesus. You know, it's about you talking to Him. See, when you give your life to Him, you can come to Him with a clean conscience. Years ago when I was married to my first husband, long time ago, because I didn't get saved till I was 35. And, but when I was married to my first husband, I cheated on him. I hate to say this, but you know, the I, I, only reason I can share my dirty laundry is because I want you to know that Jesus will forgive you no matter what you've done and that He loves you loves you enough, to, even no matter what you're doing, but loves you enough not to let you stay that way and to try to pursue you uh, with messengers, uh, messages and messengers like myself to be able to tell you that he loves you and he wants you to be part of his family. But, you know, when I committed adultery on him, uh, I couldn't look him in the eye. When he came home, I, I had a hard time talking to him. Because I knew what I had done. I felt the guilt. 
I, I knew I was doing wrong, but yet I wasn't willing to stop. And that's the way our lives are, you know. We may want God, but we want to hang on to the old life because that so-called sin is pleasurable for a season. That means just a little while. But, you know, when I got started down that road of adultery, I had children. I, took, I left my husband with those four children, moved away, took that guy with me. Well, that's sad. Well, anyway, I won't get into all that. But what I'm trying to get at is, is that this is the way it is with the Lord. He's a holy God, you see. And when we want a relationship with him, we got it, only can have that by the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. See, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, what happened is their disobedience, they were not able to walk and talk with God in the cool of the day, like Genesis said. They had a relationship with, with God. And, and they were able to talk to him face to face and have a good relationship. But when they let the enemy trick them, and you see, the enemy tr has tricked us, folks, all through our life and making us believe that we didn't have a God that loved us and that has a good future for us. So what happened is in the garden then, when he deceived them, sin came into their lives, and that sin separated them from God. They couldn't have that relationship. And see, it's all about relationship. Yes, we need to go to church, but it's not your church that's going to save you. It's that relationship between you and the Lord, living for him with your whole heart, and be able to take what he did on the cross and apply it to your life, and you become righteous now because of what he did for you. And you see, that sin will separate you. You know, later on, I got married again. And my husband did drugs. And that his doing drugs, like, put up a wall. We couldn't have a good relationship because he was high almost all the time. We, we didn't have much of a relationship. But see, God wants to restore that relationship with you and him. He wants you. He loves you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know my thoughts for you are good and not evil, to give you a good future. See, he's got a good future for you, folks. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief, which is, that's the devil, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And as you know, very well know, your consequences in our lives when we are into addictions, there is consequences. There is trouble. There, there, there is destroying of relationships and, and our lives physically, emotionally. It just ruins everything. And, but you know what? You can quit. You don't have to stay like that. He wants to rescue you. He says he's come to seek and save that which is lost. So I, I'm going to encourage you to say a prayer with me. And if you mean it with your whole heart, the Holy Spirit will come inside of you and give you the power to live it. See, that's what's been missing, folks. I went into a government-run treatment center years ago, and I thought, well, they're going to fix me. Well, folks, they couldn't fix me because you know why? It's a spiritual problem. It's my relationship with the Lord needed to be, to be fixed, which meant me surrendering to Him with my whole heart. Repentance means having a change of mind, being willing to turn from what we're doing. you got to be willing, willing to turn from that old sin and leave it behind. All you got to do is be willing. And when you're willing, the Holy Spirit comes in and you're able to turn because you won't be able to do it in your own self. You may be able to turn for a while certain things, but then something will happen and then you'll be right back at it. But the Lord wants you not only to have life abundantly. Oh, and the other part of that verse of John 10, 10. But it says, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. You see, there's the answer. It's Jesus. So I'm encouraging you right now. Say this prayer after me. Just bow your head and mean it. Mean it from your whole heart. And you're going to see. God's going to do some amazing things in your life. Say, Jesus Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you died for my sins and you rose again. And because of that, I can be your child. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, forgiving me, never giving up on me. I love you, Jesus. I will serve you 
and live for you with my whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Now get excited. Go and tell somebody. You're a new person. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. You are now a new person. If you really said it and meant it, you are a new person. Now you can go and live the life. You can share your testimony. Psalms 107.2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And he has redeemed you by the precious blood that he shed on the cross. So go share what the Lord has done in your life. Write today's date down in the Bible. And remember, this was your new day. Now you go and be a witness for him. Oh, and read your Bible. Go to church. Very important you go to church. Quit hanging with the people you used to hang with. Watch what you put in front of your eyes, what you read, what you watch. Uh, all that affects your spirit. It'll remind you of your old ways, and you don't want to go back that way. You want to hang out with other Christians and follow the Lord with your whole heart. God bless you, and remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I.